I've seen some amazing Lego recently that appears to just float in midair. My name is Lewis Matheson and I'm a high school physics teacher in the UK and I often use Lego to explain physics. And that's because it's great at modelling the world around us so that students understand some of the more tricky concepts as well as bringing the science to life. But what I'd like to do now is explain the Lego using physics because this structure uses tension to hold it up. And actually the word tensegrity was coined by Buckminster Fuller, who was a scientist in the 60s, who looked at how tension can be used for the integrity of structures. Now this happens all the time in architecture, but it also happens with other everyday items, uh, including bicycles. So the reason that your bicycle is held up is because of the tension in the spokes. And actually the weight of that bike is basically being hung from the top of the rims on the wheels. So your bike is hanging from the top of the wheel. So tension is really important, and some, some things are designed to use this to their advantage. So this structure here, uh, we need to think about tension, which is when forces are pulling apart, as opposed to compression where forces are being pushed together. And also we need to think about moments, about equilibrium and the centre of gravity. So let's have a look at the structure which is hanging from this piece of Lego. Now the first thing to think about is the centre of gravity and this is the point in an object at which the weight appears to act. Now for a 2D shape like a circle or a square it's going to be in the centre. For a shape like this it's a little bit more complicated but um, what we have is most of the mass of this object is in the blue part over here. And on my diagram below I'm just going to label it over here. So this is going to be my centre of gravity. And from the centre of gravity I'm going to draw an arrow downwards which represents the weight of that object, which is the force that it experiences uh, due to the fact it's in the gravitational field of the Earth. And what you'll notice is that a lot of these tensegrity structures, which are really stable, they have a lot of mass which is quite far away from the pivot and quite low down, and that's going to make it more stable. Now the other thing about this is that it's being hung from uh, the chain in this case, and this is then going to be acting as the pivot point. So let me again just draw that on the diagram below. And I've just drawn the line up vertically and it goes through this uh, grey part here at the top of the structure and that shows the point at which we're going to be taking moments. Now you might remember that the moment is equal to the turning effect of a force and the moment is equal to the force times a perpendicular distance from that pivot. And I'm just going to label that distance B on the diagram below. So we've now got the moment, which is due to the weight of this object acting at its centre of gravity. In this case, it's going to be acting clockwise, as I see it on the diagram down here. But there must be another force which is stopping it rotate. And this is where we have something which is in equilibrium. Now, for an object to be in equilibrium, we not only have to have balanced forces, but we also have to have balanced moments. And that means whatever the turning effect is clockwise is counterbalanced by the anti-clockwise moment. Now, for this structure here, we could apply that force just by pushing down. And you'll see again that the structure is still balanced. But to be honest, that's not very impressive. So we, rather than actually applying a force downwards with our finger, this is where we have the string or the cables. And it's these cables here which are under tension, providing that downward, downwards force at the back of the object. So again, I'll draw that onto my diagram. And I'm just going to label that a distance of A away from that central pivot. Now for an object to be in equilibrium, we can say that the moments which are anti-clockwise are equal to the clockwise moments. And on this case over here, we can then say that the tension times the distance A is equal to the weight of that object times distance B. And provided we have the two moments uh, equal to the same size, we have a structure which is then stable and it appears to balance. So that's just a summary of the physics behind this structure. We've got the weight times the distance from the pivot and that must be equal to the tension in the ropes times the distance from the pivot and provided they're balanced the structure remains stable. Have a go at making one of these. It is so rewarding when it actually stands up like this and be more creative. This is just a simple one for explaining but I've seen some amazing creations that people have already made. So thank you for watching. My name is Lewis Matheson and I've got a YouTube channel called Physics Online where I explain a lot of the physics around us using Lego to just bring it all to life. Thank you very much and stay safe.